Good morning, good afternoon. Hello, everybody. My name is Chris Campbell. I'm the owner of Captain's Auction Warehouse, located in Anaheim, California. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I make my living uh, pretty much in front of kind of a camera and in front of people uh, being an auctioneer, uh, but it still doesn't stop me from being nervous uh, for a while here. I had no idea why Rob Burke really, really wanted to get me over here. Um, because I was like, I don't even know what I could say. He said, well, just introduce yourself as the captain. And, uh, and I also have somebody that came with me, kind of like my right, my left hand, uh, Sergeant at Arms. You want to introduce yourself? I am Cece. <laughs> <laughs> Cece, the repair chick, also known as the repair chick. Um, you know, I started uh, uh, Captain's Auction Warehouse, I guess, you know, it's, it's meet the captain, I guess, the deal. So I was like, well, when I'm nervous, put together a bunch of stuff that you can just give away. So, like, at least people can go, you know, I don't even know what the heck that was, but at least he had some free stuff to give away. And, uh, you know, and I appreciate everybody who came to our meeting here today. Um, I, was Ho in I hope there was enough swag to I pass hope around. If, if there wasn't enough swag bags, I think we've got some more. We'll pawn some off to you in the, in the back alley afterwards if you'd like. <laughs> or down on the floor. Um, so Captain's Auction Warehouse was, uh, uh, I guess, incorporated. Uh, well, it was incorporated in 2010, but I started it in 1999. To give you a little brief on me, um, you know, I, uh, I grew up as a young guy, 14. I was going into bars, moving pool tables and various coin-operated machines out of an arcade and, uh, and some bars with a guy named Tall Bob. And, this guy named Phil, these are great operators. So I kind of grew up around the operating part of coin op, uh, not so much a collector, but more of a hustler uh, myself. And so I've been around uh, games and appreciated arcade games and pinball machines in particular since I was uh, young. And uh, you know, with a very boring story over the next however many years, I cut my way through uh, a lot of work and business, but I always had a gift of gab and, uh, you know, I, um, through circumstances, and somebody in the previous meeting mentioned uh, 2008. Um, in 2008, there were a lot of things that happened, and there were things that happened that didn't have anything to do with coin op. But I was in a business that was uh, doing international trade uh, in Japan. I was moving a lot of gaming machines and, you know, coin operated stuff that, slot machines and everything. And uh, in 2008, uh, when the economy took a dive, uh, that that consumer kind of driven business that I had uh, really slowed down and uh, and what I had to do was pivot in my business and uh, you know there were a lot of operators and people that were struggling uh, at that time and uh, so I started to develop an auction business and uh, I had a lot of operator friends uh, that is that my water I had a lot of operator friends that were hurting and needed cash and uh, excuse me guys you made it thank you um, there were a lot of operators that needed some help and so I created an auction house and uh, in 2008 2009 um, it was a lot of handwritten stuff there wasn't really the internet streaming anything like that and uh, you know long story short I started an auction business that in our local area really took off and, uh, you know, and I knew we had something there. And uh, I'm going to give it to you for a second here. Tell, tell them well, a little so bit about Well, so when you, you first started doing your auction, I remember the girl from Storage Wars <coughs> was your auctioneer. Mm. <laughs> so I, I was a longtime customer. <laughs> yeah, Cece, Cece's been a longtime customer with us. She comes from San Diego area, and she would come up to our auction and I hired an auctioneer that went on to do Storage Wars, a gal named Laura Dotson. Great gal, uh, but I figured I'd hire somebody who was, you know, I guess she was energetic, I would say. And uh, so she was doing the auctions, and Cece would come up to the auctions, and she'd come in like a rock star, <laughs> big sunglasses, come in with Keith Elwin. You were working with Keith, and Keith uh, is a pinball designer and stuff, right? And you guys were buying for San Diego. That was before he was working for Stern. And uh, so they'd come in, and I always saw Cece, and I liked her because she was, you know, c 
cool. She was terminally cool. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, there's operators and there's people that are hobbyists and everybody. And Cece was like really cool because she was in both the communities. And, uh, you know, it's funny that, uh, you know, like minds, they get together and stuff. And, uh, you know, years later, as uh, the business started to progress uh, and what we did, um, I was the first one to basically introduce an integration of uh, uh, live streaming with real-time bidding uh, in our auctions. And, uh, you know, when that came about, it really opened the door for us to, you know, get out there. And there were more and more people that started to, you know, uh, I guess you would say, see the auction maybe in a little bit different of a light because I was bringing in uh, people that are here that have been to arcade auctions. Has anybody been to an arcade auction before, the live ones, in different parts of the country, right? Sometimes good, sometimes bad, yeah. Well, sometimes good, sometimes bad, and there's a company that was doing a lot of those auctions that was out there that, um, you know, I had to help kind of change uh, the way some people looked at auctions because the arcade auctions and the pinball auctions were kind of, uh, you know, subject to as is, where is all the time. And, uh, you know, I, I like to believe that, you know, we created something, uh, you know, in Southern California uh, with the streaming to go along with the, uh, the live uh, on-site bidding. Uh, we created something that... Uh, but the big thing is, is that you have your own warehouse. Well, yeah. So... We have our own facility. I've got my own warehouse, actually two buildings in Southern California uh, that equates to about close to 50,000 square feet of secured facility for arcades and pinballs to be sold. And a lot of that success in our uh, sales has been the fact that people can buy uh, from our location and have the convenience of, uh, you know, being able to pick up, take some time, get it shipped. Arrange uh, shipping the next week. Yeah, arrange shipping. and. Uh, just a lot of convenience things. I've always wanted to put uh, the consumer and the operator. See, I work both ends of the spectrum with an auction. You have people who consign equipment and you have people who buy the equipment. And uh, so that's your buyers and your sellers. And, uh, you know, we own very little of the equipment that's sold in our sales. But we do, uh, we do sell quite a few pinball machines every month. And uh, they're generally going to great homes. I'm a uh, to get back to, you know, my core is I'm not just in this for the sale. I mean, I'm an enthusiast, a collector, uh, you know, a player, competitor, uh, you know, distributor now for pinball. Um, you know, I kind of uh, bleed my business and pinball uh, to go with family, you know, with my family. Those are the top three deals that I got going. And uh, so, you know, back to... Uh, captains is like that's me so it was kind of hard not to come in here and just kind of promote my business but uh, you know what um, what I do like saying is you know I'm a part of this community and I enjoy being in it you know and I was really looking forward to this meeting and we were kind of joking was, I was almost going to pay people off uh, you know to come over to the meeting because we joked we'd ask people hey can Five you come people. to the meeting because we're going to have at least four of us here or five of us here, you know, I mean, really, um, you know, it was my kind of our biggest nightmare when we would do the auctions before, uh, even before the internet is posting and advertising and then opening the door and seeing if anybody shows up. And, uh, <laughs> well, we had to offer them the swag bags and stuff, 10 to 20. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of it with me. Um, you know, CeCe's done a heck of a lot of work. Um, there's a lot of things I couldn't accomplish without CeCe. She's like the right hand. She's packing the bag. She's like true blue captains uh, when we go to a lot of events. Uh, not as many of these shows, uh, but we do go to some of the trade shows. Uh, we promote, uh, you know, pinball play. We promote tournament play. We promote... Uh, you know, purchasing, uh, getting into pinball. Uh, you know, we have a showroom in Anaheim also, which is an interactive showroom. We have games for sale and coin drop. Uh, it's an all ages, super clean, nice environment, uh, uh, pinball hall that CC has started uh, a women's, uh, the women's bells, bells and, chimes. and chimes. Yeah. 
with Orange County. And she's a full-time TD as well as uh, she is a paid employee for Captain's Auction Warehouse that does a lot of extra work on her time as well. Uh, you know, it's 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 a 24/7 deal, pretty I've, I've much. Pretty with much, us. I've pretty much moved into the showroom. Yeah, Cece lives at the showroom half the time, three quarters of the time. <laughs> she's in the showroom, so we have to keep it really nice for her in there. <laughs> what else you got? Mm. Well, well I, I don't know if we have much time, but I really. We don't yeah, we don't actually. Thanks for being yeah. Um, <laughs> So I know there were there were people that asked about the uh, banning auction. Uh, we did a banning auction in 2021. If you don't know what banning is, the Museum of Pinball that was out there, uh, where captains and the crew. There were uh, seven of us, and we sold 1,328 games. Uh, 546 of them were pinball machines. We did it in two three-day periods um, in the city of Banning, which is like a one-horse town. Uh, there were a lot of people, even the volunteers, that said it'll never work. You can't get the internet. You can't do this. You can't do that. It's just, it's going to be a disaster. You should just sell it all locally. Well, I devised a plan. I hooked up internet. We had perfect streaming ability, and we streamed all over the world. And, uh, you know, I think it reshaped a lot of the pinball uh, pricing. I know there's some manufacturers in here that actually had conversations about elevating rates based on the banning museum. So if there's anybody to blame for some of the price hikes when you're buying an expensive pinball, I'm right here. <laughs> it's been proven because there are, there's education documents that were written and discussed uh, on college campuses in, in, uh, in finance. Uh, there were professors of finance that were talking about this banning museum. And it got uh, worldwide publicity. And I think it lended a lot to the pinball community, and I was actually very happy to be a part of that, as well as the crew that, and we pulled it off. It was pretty awesome. Thank you. So I think we have a couple minutes. Can we get some Q&A? Yo. Um, I, softness is a good word. I mean. I think a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, the atmosphere, time of the, year. the time of the year and the atmosphere of, you know, what's going on. Um, but I still see a strong demand, big, strong demand. But, you know, uh, what has gone up will never come back down. I think that soft is still in a soft, elevated position. And I don't think it's really going anywhere. But, yeah, it's a good question. Yes. Uh, what's the weirdest thing you found in the cabinet? Oh, uh, boy. Well, <clears throat> <laughs> it's been a couple of things. Some gross, some probably could open up to litigation, but I found, uh, you know, a few strange things. i tell you one of the coolest Walter things Day. I found was a bag of money. Yeah. Uh, $3,523 in ones. <laughs> and, and, in a Pac-Man machine, yeah. I found some self-defense weapons in a pinball machine, too. Yeah. Inter a lot of interesting I, I stuff. I found it and gave it to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's three right there. That's three. <laughs> cool. Other questions? Uh, to play right now, there's 65. We have 65 pins spanning the 70s, 80s, 90s. I just checked the pinball map, and uh, oh, that's right. I think there it's six, one there. there's one on there. It's there. Six, 65, <laughs> uh, plus another 45 that are waiting in the wings that she won't put in the room because it doesn't meet her standards. We we are on we are on coin drop, so we still believe in the the almighty quarter. We got change machines. Um, it is a super super pristine showroom. Uh, there's one vending machine that's really clean, and there's a really nice elevator soda machine that has energy drinks, the sodas, and that's it. No food, no alcohol. Open to all ages, uh, Monday through Friday. 12 to 9 plus tournaments. We have some of the best pinball players in the world that come play at our place, and I work on the machines, and, I don't, and I'm also the TD, and I don't want to get a lot of complaints, so I make sure 
that everything is working properly. So yeah, in 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 pinball, um, we like to believe that our showroom we do build champions in there, and there's players everything that are here that go there. Super tough. Everything is like. If you want to just go play some floaty bounce around pinball, that's cool. But man, even the EMs are kind of screaming down the play field, but they are really, really nice. CC puts a lot of pride in that work and, and we keep an eye on it. It's a pretty high control showroom, very nice, always attended and always uh, open and welcome, especially to new players. I was talking to pinball map outside um, and I ask everybody who comes in that I don't recognize and I really enjoy that pinball map draws a lot of people in. Um, you know, we also have an opportunity to uh, offer pinballs for sale. There's a lot of people that may want to trade something in or put one in their home. Uh, we're not opposed to that. We love to have you come and play. We've got all like all the new Stearns and the new Jersey Jacks are, are there as they come out uh, to play. But we also have them available uh, for sale as well. Pretty cool. Yes. A minimum, a minimum amount? No. No, actually, um, when I started with the auctions, uh, you know, I always kept it open to any amount of pinball machines is fine. I had a uh, Williams Steve Ritchie high speed uh, in my first four auctions because the guy loaned it to me because I wanted to say arcade and pinball auction. I didn't have any pinballs. Nobody was coughing them up then. And uh, he said, I'll give you this high speed, but I have to put a reserve on it, you know. And so he wouldn't buy it back, but I put a reserve just so I could say I had pinballs. So the first, I had four, the one pinball machine four times. After that, it was never a minimum. And then I'd moved to seven, and then I went to 10, and then the numbers were so good, you know, I almost had to hold stuff back, you know. And now you do not do reserves. Yeah, there's, there's no reserves at our auction they sell. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, a lot of the success for the sellers, people that want to maximize their dollar, uh, you know, unfortunately it comes with the price of, you got to get the equipment to our warehouse because a lot of the value is in the fact that we've got a secured warehouse, we take care of it, we market the item, uh, you know, we've got a huge customer base, uh, over 18,000 proven customers uh, that we email that uh, believe and, and see our brand and, and buy all the arcades and pinballs. Uh, and it usually works out because I can always help with transportation as well. If people need to get stuff trucked in. Uh, I've trucked in semi loads of pinball machines uh, from different parts, even different countries. I've brought them in and sold them for clients. Yes. Uh, we sell projects. We prefer that they're at least complete. Because we love the history, too. I mean, I love having the history of those games and the pinballs as well. Last question. If just the, the hammer's been thrown down. Yes. Uh, we do auction between four and six weeks. And the average has been right around 50 to 60. We just had an auction last weekend with 71 pinball machines in it. The previous before that, I think it was like 68. And and it's like all the eras. So, you know, if you wanted new, used, we pretty much have them all in there. And it's not that people are dumping their collections. They're just rotating. They've moved on. They've run out of space, however they handle it. But, you know, the great part is, is we have enough, uh, you know, respect in the community that people do bring their equipment. And I know a lot of those operators and collectors that would never even think about giving somebody one of their games or trusting them to sell it, and they bring them in. Um, so we got a great staff. You know, the rest of my staff back home, they're working right now. They better be. And, um, you know, I think that's it. I got somebody standing behind me. I don't and, know and if he's we, armed we or not. We do get a but, lot of rarities, too. Yeah, we get a lot of rarities. So make sure before they cut us off here, captainsauctionwarehouse.com. Check us out for all your pinball needs. <laughs> And Thank you. Stern Pinballs.